Raise your hand if you've been having a blast in season four of Overwatch 2. If you raised your hand, put it down and stop lying. No? No one? Yeah, me neither. But season five is finally dropping and after suffering through season four, I think we all deserve a little treat. And thankfully, we are getting just that because there's a brand new battle pass coming and totally not biased because I'm a sucker for D&D stuff, but this is by far the best one yet. Hi, I'm Emma Wyeth and I'm going to be your tour guide through the season five cosmetics, which will include all of the battle pass cosmetics and shop skins that I had access to preview. Now, I'm not going to make you listen to me talk about every single item, so I'm going to show and give my thoughts on all of the skins and the full battle pass itself will be shown at the end of the video without any voiceover. If you don't want to hear me talk and you just want to see what's in the battle pass, skip to that part. Starting out with the battle pass, the theme is fantasy with an emphasis on dungeons and dragons. Along with this, there's an interactive story called Quest Watch that unlocks as you progress through the battle pass and follows Tracer, Arisa, and Emily through a Dungeons and Dragons-esque storyline, which Tracer refers to as role heroes. Everyone excited to play role heroes? Emily's been working on this campaign for ages. Do you have your characters ready? Uh -huh. It looks like Reinhardt is the BBEG at the top and Emily is like a princess. So we probably get some interactions with her and Tracer, which is really cool. It's a fun little addition. And before I see, her, 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 this isn't PVE, blah, 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 I know it's not PVE. It's not a replacement to PVE. It can exist separately as a cool thing in the game. Anyway, with this is a feature in the battle pass where you can unlock bits and pieces of the legendary skin by progressing, earning the base skin at 45, adding cosmetic alterations at tier 65, and getting the full customization at 80. And since we're here, let's just go ahead and look at the mythic skin for this season, which was awarded to the poster child of Overwatch, Tracer. While I am a teensy bit salty that it's going to Tracer, who already has a plethora of amazing skins, this is extremely fitting for her and looks amazing, so I'm not that mad after looking at it. I mean, look at how cute she looks. The customizations include three different guns. Here they are with the golden on them. three different headpieces, and three different colors that also offer various visual effects. The base blue giving a light wispy aura, the red offering a fire visual, and the turquoise creating a more flashy effect. Additionally, the headpiece you choose will either tone these down or make them more prominent. And of course, there are some unique voice lines and a new visual on Pulse Bomb. <laughs> Even outside of the mythic though, I find this battle pass to be the best yet in terms of quality and just following the theme in general. In previous BPs, we seemed to get a lot of random skins and cosmetics that didn't really go with the theme, only for a bunch of skins that did go with the theme to get dropped in the shop. Don't get me wrong, there are still a lot of shop skins, but this battle pass is actually like really solid. Starting out strong, you can unlock two fantastic skins that include Griffin Arissa and Royal Astronomer Zenyatta. If you dislike either of these skins, you're just wrong. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, look, they put a mount on Arissa so Hanzo can finally ride her, and Zenyatta's balls have never looked better. Now, when I first saw this Echo skin, I was like, eh, it's a little strange, like it's cute, but I don't know. And then it just grew on me for some reason. I think maybe after seeing the rest of the items and all the things referencing these jelly guys, it made the skin make more sense. <sighs> Genji, once again, getting another amazing skin. I am sick and tired of the Overwatch devs drawing me closer and closer into being a Genji sim. How did they even manage to make a cyborg robot ninja look this good in a medieval fantasy setting? The skin is so cool and I'm mad about it. Next, I'm gonna be honest, this is the worst skin in the entire battle pass. No hate to the art team because I think they carry, but what is this color scheme? I know blue and orange are complimentary, but it is just not working for me. I mean, the skin is called Polar and Anna is a sniper. Why would it not be like white or something that blends closer into the Arctic than a bright orange and blue color scheme? She might as well just wear a giant red target. She ain't hiding from nobody in that. I don't know. I'm disappointed with this one, but hey, if this is the worst one in the battle pass, I'd say they're doing pretty good. Looks like Mei is gearing up for her reign of CC terror with a hot new skin. I'm not usually into the steampunk aesthetic, but this one is absolutely working. The hair, the goggles, the striped pants, the bag and potion bottles. Mwah. It looks like Hammond decided to finally join the honeybee crew. So now tank mains have more options to match their mercy duo that's going to let everyone but them die. At least they'll look adorable from the spectating screen. Ah yes, the Overwatch 2 poster child that will soon replace Tracer. 
See, they can try to make Sojourn the poster child of Overwatch 2 all they want. When they keep giving Kiriko these fire-ass skins, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, she has freaking red eyes. This is only an epic skin and it's better than some other hero's legendaries. The Afuda look like they belong painted on some of the Fast and Furious cars. And finally, the Reinhardt skin. This one deserves its own shrine. Forget Lilith, where can I sign up to be part of Demon Lord Reinhardt's army? Look, the wings wiggle. Oh, the things I would do to be struck by this hammer. Amazing, iconic, legendary. He is grace, he is beauty, he is class. See, I wasn't joking when I said this BP is the best so far. But wait, there's more! We still have the shop skins, so without further ado... Up first, we have the Junker Queen Gladiator skin, which I assume was not released with the Olympus BP since she got the mythic, but regardless, it's a great skin. I looked up what the words on her gun mean, and it's I came, I saw, I conquered, which goes along with the new voice line that I assume she'll get in a bundle with this highlight intro. <laughs> I saw, I stomped some face. Ramatra is getting a skin titled Jade Totem, which is cool. It's an epic, so it's nice for the tier. Is it my favorite skin? Nah, I'm not a huge fan of the mask, but I do like the colors. Cassidy also gets an epic skin, actually with similar color patterns as the Ramatra one with this bluish green. It's cool, a nice color palette for an epic skin, nothing crazy though. What do we have here? Is this a forest skin that matches Mercy's devil skin? That just so happens to also be called devil? The Overwatch devs know exactly what they're doing. All right, I feel this one is going to be controversial, but I love this Reaper skin. It is so refreshing to have a Reaper skin that is still edgy, but without using all black. The guns are sick, the mask is sick, the painted toenails are sick. The only thing I wish they did was give him a back tattoo because that would be sick. Speaking of sick, Sojourn finally got a, a semi-good skin? Keep in mind it's only an epic, but for an epic? I think it's still pretty good. I love her hair and the bun and hat and the pattern on her clothes. Just a lot of cute little details that pull it all together. Now this somber skin seems a bit out of place for this season, but it is a shop skin, so whatever. I just wish it were a skin in the first battle pass because it would have gone fantastic with the theme. I love the hair and the face. The legs throw me off a bit because they look so skinny, but overall the pattern and color scheme work for me. I dig it. Sim gets a cute little conjurer epic skin. The hood looks amazing, the weapons are all right, but the golden works pretty well with it, which is nice. Although shockingly, Brigida doesn't get a skin, good old Daddy Torbjorn does, and it doesn't disappoint. I'm surprised this is only an epic for all the details that are in it. The vest with its own pattern, the goggles, the top hat, the moving backpack, it's fantastic. Even the gun is pretty detailed. Now, I was not ready for this one. I audibly gasped when I first opened the skin because, oh my lord, it's amazing. And the hair, oh my god, the hair. Just a genuinely beautifully done skin. There's only one other skin that competed for my favorite with this one, which you'll see in a bit. But look at the gun. I beg you not to put the gold on this weapon because it looks so good without it. <laughs> I just can't express how much I love this skin. So good. And then there is the skin that rivals as the favorite for me. Lifeweaver's Cleric skin. I'm a bit pissed that this went to Lifeweaver because I really, really, really wanted Baptiste to get a cleric skin, but I will say it looks great on him. His hair and the ponytail looks so good. The decorations on his back, which I assume are meant to be like a holy symbol, is a really nice detail. And I love that they gave someone the classic chainmail. And of course, because the overall color palette is a golden yellow, the golden weapon effect looks great with the skin. Okay, but wait, we aren't done yet. Is it any surprise that Lucio got a bard skin? I love the skin itself with the little loot on his back and his hair all down and the hat. But the gun, I think, was maybe bugged for me. So I'm not going to judge the gun or show the gun because I'm not sure that this is the final product. Okay, now take a quick breather. Are you ready? They've done it. They gave Mercy a lifeguard skin. So Farah and Mercy got two, not one, two matching skins. Just saying, if you're trying to be an e-couple, now's the time. The weapons look great. I love the staff. I love the little anchor detail on the gun. I already know the Mercy mains are going to eat this one up. And then we have, um, whatever this is. I love the idea, but I don't know what it is. Something about the skin is like very off. Flake Doctor is so fitting for Moira, but something is just not vibing for me. Maybe I'm just a hater because this skin is also released this season and it's directly above it. And holy sh-
It is giving everything we've ever needed in a Moira skin. I am genuinely at a loss for words. Overall, I am very happy with the cosmetics in this upcoming season, but what do you guys think? This entire theme was right up my alley, so I don't know if I just have rose-colored glasses on. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! We are simply on different levels. Chivalry is dead. Rust, my greatest weakness. know yourself. Gain more experience before you challenge me again. There are slimes with more personality than you. How do you want to do this? This time, I'll roll higher.
It was a dark and stormy night. That was pretty good. You can still be good, while being up to no good. I could use an adventure. Six demonic hearts burn within my chest. <laughs> 